A lot of people have been asking me about masking, so here I come with a great tutorial that talks about everything you need to know about masking. What is it for? What does it do? And how you can properly use it. This tutorial is split up into three videos. The first one is going to talk about the fundamentals of masking, how you can use it, how to apply it. And then on the next video, I'm going to show you how to create split screens and get some characters to travel from one screen to another without being seen um, in between. And the third video is going to show you how to use track mat. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to talk deeper into masking. So the first thing I want to show you or talk about inside Cray Studio is that there are two ways of applying masks. One is the typical way of masking, which I'm going to show you today and in the upcoming video as well. And then the second way is using track mat, which we'll be uh, releasing in the uh, third video. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're, you're notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in learning more about masking, also leave me a comment in the comment section below with the word masking that way i know you're interested in the upcoming tutorial so without further ado let's dive into masking the question that we need to answer is what is masking what is it for masking is simply a cropping tool the easiest way for you to understand it is that it is a cropping tool that allows you to crop portions of your assets objects or even scenes to make things visible and things invisible. How? Just like the current example that we're looking at on screen right now. So we now have a character that is showing up as popping out of the circle. And I'm using the circle as a mask to mask my character. It's the reason why we don't see the bottom part of his body, the rest of his legs. Because when I go back to the very beginning, my character is still making his action, which is waving, but he starts with an idle uh, pose like this. And as we see that his hands are pointed down, and that's the reason also we don't see his, you know, uh, his missing parts of his hands. When I start moving my playhead forward in time, just like that, we can now see that his hands are like he's picking up his hands and starts to wave. And that's when we get to see everything that goes inside the circle. Now, one thing that I wanted to share with you about masking and how to properly use it. So let's go into the slide. Here we see that we have three different shapes, a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle. And I have those examples just to say that you can use shapes as masks which means that you can literally use any shape that is available in the studio as a mask. So it doesn't really have to be a circle. It doesn't have to be a rectangle nor a triangle. So if you go into the studio and then you click on shapes right there, you're going to see a lot of shapes available in the studio and you can use any of those shapes as your masks. Now, I'm not sure about the 3D ones, though. I haven't tried but um, it doesn't seem, you know, I'm not sure if they're going to work, but I know for a fact that any other shape just like those, like the SVG type um, shapes, they work as masks. So that is just a tip for you to know about that. You can literally use shapes as masks with anything else that you can think of. That could be video clips, that could be images, that could be characters, it could be objects or whatever. Now, the question is how to apply a mask. So I'm going to go with a pretty simple example that I showed you at the very beginning. Um, and I'm going to grab a circle just by hitting the shift key and the C letter C on my keyboard to grab a circle like that. And I want to add a character that looks like popping out of a circle and then mask my character with with the circle shape. But before I do this, um, I want to take a step and then uh, make a duplicate of my circle. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to use one circle track in the timeline as a mask and the other one is going to be kept as a background because what happens is when I apply a mask to the you know uh, using the circle as well and onto the character the tr circle track is going to disappear well technically it is there it's just going to become part of the character's layer so I'm going to show you that in a second but let's go and rename our layers so we stay organized so I'm going to right click the first uh, circle track in the timeline and rename it and call this mask right here and then I'm going to rename the other one right click and rename it and call this BG for background now I'm going to go into my studio back again, open up my characters and then choose 3D characters. And then I can grab uh, Victoria, for example. So let's just grab her, resize her like that. Now she's going to be waving. I'm not going to change the action, but feel free to change the action if you want to. That's totally up to you. 
and I just want something quick just for the sake of the tutorial. Next thing is to select your character layer and the timeline along with the mask layer, which is the circle, both together and simply right click that and then choose mask Victoria with mask. Once we hit that, now we see that our character is masked with the circle. So if I press play, our character is going to wave. And as we can see uh, that the, the uh, character's uh, hands or a little bit of the fingers are missing out. The reason for that is since we're using the circle as a mask, it simply means that everything that goes into the circle radius or inside the circle radius is what is going to be visible and anything that goes outside the circle radius is what's going to be invisible which means that or you can say that this applies to the entire shape list in the studio so if you're using a rectangle that means that everything that goes into the rectangle is visible and anything that is outside the rectangle is invisible same with the triangle same with other shapes like the heart shape or the star shape or the hexagon or whatever right it's all the same concept. Everything that goes into the shape is visible. Anything that goes outside is invisible. Now I can go ahead and change the background color if I want. This is the background layer that I've got. I can simply just open up the color settings and then change it to purple, gray. I can make it red, you know, blue like that, green, right? I could choose any color I want uh, from uh, from the color settings. So this is really cool. Now, let's say, for example, I don't want to use a circle as my background. Like I don't, I'm not interested in using a solid color or even a, you know, gradient color. It really doesn't matter, but I'd like to have my character on a background from the studio instead of the circle. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, in order for, uh, for us to undo the mask that we just applied, we can simply just right click the character track in the timeline and then we get to see one of the options here that says unmask. When we click that, now we see our mask is right there again visible for us on the canvas as well as the timeline. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this off, right? delete that one and I'm going to use the other circle as a mask for later and in for uh, for the scene that I'm going to create. So let me rename that one more time. So instead of background, it's going to be mask like this. And then I'm going to go into my studio, just go back into backgrounds and then grab one of the 3D backgrounds available. Let's do this Paris one, for example, right here, scale it up so I can make it a full width. I want to make sure this is lined up on the timeline in the timeline along with the character. Then I'm going to grab my character, make sure that my character layer is above the background so she's visible. And then I can resize her just a little bit, make her smaller. It is important that your character sizes uh, should be uh, your character size should be inside the background. It does, you know, you can't just have your character like this and then apply a mask. It's not going to work. You're going to end up seeing the whole character's body. So you want to make sure that your character size is small enough that goes into the scene just like this. It doesn't go outside the canvas boundaries. Next up is selecting both layers so your character and the group and the uh, background layer just like that and then you want to group these guys together you can either right click and choose group or hit control or command g to group these up like that and then the next thing you want to do is grab the circle above right there and here's here's what's important before applying a mask to this scene that that means well, first of all I'm, when i apply a mask that means that my scene is going to look like circular because everything is going to go inside the circle uh, but what I want to do is I want to reduce opacity of my mask. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to, you know, position my mask, you know, where I want and also size it uh, the size I want. So it's going to be something like that. And again, I can use any other shape. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be anything else. So once we make our um, uh, positioning and scale and all that, don't forget to go back to settings and then increase the opacity back to 100%. This is really important. And when done, what you want to do is you want to select your mask layer in the timeline along with the group that you just uh, created. And then you simply right click and then mask these guys together. Now we see a background instead of the uh, solid color that we had previously. So if I go back and then press play, this is what it's going to look like. You know, our character and background, basically the entire scene is masked into the circle. Oops, just like that. And then everything is, uh, you know, looking really good so far. The cool thing about this, since this is a group, is that you can simply just resize your um, your scene or the circle, whatever you call it. You can resize it to any size you want and just move it around on anywhere on the canvas. 
and you can also apply animation to it so you can uh you know uh, apply preset motion or custom animation it really doesn't matter but you can you know you have all this grouped up so you can easily just apply an animation to it so let's say i want to do something else than the uh the circle so i'm just going to ungroup this right there so first of all i'm sorry unmask this so i can just take off the mask and i'm just going to change the circle instead of the circle let's use a square for example so i'm going to grab a square right there and again um, i like to reduce opacity just so i can you know try and position and resize this to however size i want to and then when i'm happy i don't forget to go back into settings and then increase the opacity back to 100 percent like that way and then you what you want to do is simply just select your square which is going to be the mask you can rename it if you want to that's the best way to stay organized uh, select that along with your group right there right click mask and there you go now we have our mask applied to the scene so it looks like square instead of a circle shape right so that tells you that you can use any shape now another tip that i want to share with you about masking is that you can detach your mask so right now what we've got is the square used as a mask for this whole scene that's why it looks like you know a square but as you've seen when i try and drag this whole thing together everything moves moves at the same time my background as well as the character but when i go into settings right there on the right panel and then you should be able to see an option that says detach mask when you detach your mask what that does is that it separates the mask from the actual scene allowing you to animate the mask separately it's pretty much making the mask uh, stationary where you can animate it separately so technically the mask is still there it's only that you have the flexibility to animate your mask separately and i'm going to show you that now so now I, you can see that i'm moving my circle around the scene and everything is 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 as is like the character is where she is the background is where she is the only thing that is not visible the only thing that's moving is the square that i'm moving around so if i take this off like that now we can see another or a different portion of the background but we can't see the character why because the ma the mask is in a different place than where the character is but if i grab the mask back again right there where the character is now we can see the character so that's what makes the the mask stationary is that when you go under settings you turn on detach mask feature this allows you to animate your mask separately so what i can do is let's say for example i want to animate this and i want to scale this up right so i'm going to go under um onto the right panel where motion is i'm going to apply a simple scale animation so under in scale i'm going to choose us uh, up so that it scales up let's start from the very beginning you can see that it's called it starts scaling up like that let me extend it so i can slow it down a little bit i'm going to go back from the beginning and then press play and this is what it's going to look like right so we have a simple scaling up animation for the mask and you can see that the mask is the only thing that is being scaled up like up and down as i'm moving backward and forward in time like that and my scene is as is like the, like i said the character is as is she's where she is at and the background is where she's at now if um if i have my playhead after the animation uh, button right here on the track and go back into settings and say i want to turn off the detach mask so if i turn it off like that um i can easily just go back again and i want you to notice the difference now the mask is fully attached to the scene the entire thing including the character and the background so if i go backward in time with my playhead like this notice the difference that the whole thing is now being scaled up both together the background and the character versus the previous example where i showed you separating the mask or making it stationary that you can animate the mask separately um so that's pretty much all the basics and all you need to know about uh, masks and how to apply masks on the next session or the next uh, uh, example like i said i'm going to show you this you know this example where we have a split screen uh, with a character making a couple of actions like this and he's going to travel over from this uh, scene onto the other scene without being seen in the middle right so here we go he's going to take a selfie right there onto the other scene so as you can see this is what will happen the character is going to travel all the way and as he gets out of the first screen he's not visible anymore and as soon as he gets into the second one you know that's when he becomes visible into the other screen 
that would be my next example that I'm going to share with you how to create something like this. And I'm pretty sure you can have a lot of ideas in creating multi screens on your canvas or in your projects. So stay tuned for another tutorial. And again, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already to be notified when I release a new one and leave a comment with the word masking. So I know you're interested in watching the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.